Now, they may not be here, but we have been keeping Dr James and Ollie very busy. They've been investigating a growing threat to our animals and it turns out it's not just cats and dogs who are at risk. Us humans are too, whether we have a pet or not. Even with Ollie, dog walking on a nippy winter's morning can feel more of a chore than it did in the warmer months. One consolation used to be that at least the parasites that bother our pets in spring and autumn are less of a problem as it gets colder. But now, that's not always the case. When I first started working as a vet about 13 years ago, it was so rare to find a tick on a dog that when we did, we'd call everybody in the practice round to come and have a look at it. But these days, unfortunately, it's commonplace. And parasites like ticks and fleas are not only a nuisance, but they can cause real serious health concerns, not just for our pets, but also for us too. Ticks are most at home in grassy or woodland areas. It's estimated that only about 10% of them carry disease, but a bite from an infected one can have terrible consequences, as Louise Moss and her greyhound Poppy discovered when they went for a walk last spring. A couple of ticks jumped onto Poppy and I flicked them off and a few got onto me, flicked them off, jumped up, came home um, and realised Poppy had been bitten. Three days later I realised I'd also been bitten by a tick and I pulled it out and really thought nothing more of it. But then I realised I had a, a large rash, it was a bullseye rash. A bite surrounded by a circular rash is a classic symptom of Lyme disease. Passed from ticks to humans and pets, it's a bacterial infection that comes with some pretty nasty symptoms, as Louise soon realised. I started to get fatigue, really stiff joints. Um, my neck in particular was really stiff. And what did you notice with Poppy? She actually was fatigued as well. She did start vomiting. That didn't seem to be associated with food. And she also had a red ring around her tick bite. And I thought, oh, I think she's got the same thing. Both owner and pet were treated for Lyme disease. And while Poppy bounced back, Louise still has symptoms seven months on. Public Health England reckoned that up to 3,000 people get it every year. And back in the summer, it confirmed the UK's first ever case of a rare tick-borne disease called babesiosis. It's thought that one third of dogs have got ticks, but removing them within 24 hours does reduce the risk of infection. Remember to always use a tick hook like this to remove it. You want to get as close to the skin as you can, twist and then pull, and that way you won't leave any part of the tick behind, which could otherwise result in infection. If you've been bitten by a tick and have symptoms, talk to your GP immediately. But it's not just ticks that are a problem. Fleas are much more common and also pose a risk to both humans and pets' health. And in fact, if left unchecked, fleas can actually become life-threatening to animals. Research published just this year shows that one in four cats and one in seven dogs that show up at vets' practices have fleas. And that's a worry for pets and owners because bites can cause infection and allergic reaction in humans. To help me understand why we're getting no respite from parasites in the colder months, not just fleas but ticks too, I'm meeting Professor of Zoology at the University of Bristol, Richard Wall. What is going on? In previous years, we've tended to have distinct peaks of tick activity in the spring and in the autumn. They need temperatures of about 6 or 7 degrees centigrade to become active. So as we've seen increasing levels of warm, wet winters, so the tick activity has been able to persist all the way through the year. So now there's a risk of tick bites pretty much all the way through the winter months. And is that something that we can link directly to climate change then? As far as we're aware, that's certainly the case. I mean, it's very difficult to show a you know, definitive proof that it's climate change, but climate change certainly seems to be the main factor that we can implicate in this increasing winter biting. And is it the same situation for fleas then? No, it's quite a different story for fleas, really. An awful lot of them live indoors in people's houses. So because we have nice, warm, centrally heated houses and that central heating continues all the way, particularly through the winter, then those flea populations will persist in, indoors all year round. A lot of people find fleas really difficult to get on top of. Why is that? 
because the flea populations live in people's houses, you know, buried at the base of the carpets and in pet bedding, they will emerge continuously over long periods of time within that domestic environment. So it needs a fairly long-term pattern of treatment to be able to actually eradicate that flea population. At least six months, maybe more. A warming planet and our cosy homes are helping troublesome parasites thrive in the colder months. So with both your health and the health of your pets on the line, please be on guard for fleas and ticks this winter. And if you have any concerns at all, get in touch with your vet straight away. Oh, uh, uh, makes me uh, itch. Horrible, I know, Ooh. just looking at them. It's horrible, isn't it, Dr. Zand? And, and Lyme disease is on the increase because of this warm weather. Yeah, so we, climate change is definitely making Lyme disease more common in parts of the world. You didn't have to worry about it before, and in parts of the UK. My advice is definitely tuck your trousers into your socks, don't get bitten by a tick, and when you check for ticks, you're looking for something the size of a poppy seed in your crevices and you get okay <laughs> so it's not easy to do it's thorough and if you've got kids do check everyone and if you find one of those bullseye rashes like a big rash with a dot in yeah. the middle of it go to your gp <sighs>